tell us a bit about um, how you are raising money today for your movies. Well, one advantage I guess I've always had is that I'm not really loyal to any one particular country. I started out in South Africa, then um, relocated to the United Kingdom. I'm currently living in France, and I'm thinking about becoming a naturalized American. But essentially, I'm prepared to um, go to any country that will have me, depending on where the funding is. The um, next movie we're making, I started out writing it set in France, and um, it's, we're now setting it up in Canada. So it may end up being um, shot in Ontario, and failing that, it may yet go to South Africa, all the way back to, um, to Sorsigan. Lately, I've been writing a lot of material which um, is very interchangeable, stuff which is set in one location, one house, or um, one bunker, or something which could essentially be shot anywhere. <laughs> There's always an element of luck, no matter how determined you are, no matter how good the script is. There's also some part of it which is a bit like being struck by lightning, uh, that you're still waiting for that the bolt from the blue to come through and for the um, all the right pieces to be in line. Nine times out of ten, it's been the, the script that's gotten made has been the thing that sh nobody's quite believed in, the dark horse, um, extremely strange project, which just happened to be in the, the right place at the right time, which is really how both of yeah, Hardware and Dust Devil got made. Hardware um, got made largely because um, Palace Films and Miramax at that time wanted an, their own version of Evil Dead. They had a huge hit with Evil Dead. Uh, and they wanted something which they could turn around quickly, which um, basically for um, around um, 800 grand um, in one location. And um, hardware just happened to, um, to be there. So did you write for that purpose or did you have it already? Was it hardware already in script form? Um, hardware evolved. It was um, initially, there was a script, but it was a much more cerebral script. It started out being uh, something closer to um, the John Huston movie, Fat City, set in the 21st century. The original script had no cyborg, uh, no action. It was um, originally a, a Christmas movie with these different um, irradiated, um, de really depressed characters trying to make sense of their lives and dreaming about a better world stuck in the, mm. stuck in the future. And after passing the script around many, many times, um, everyone told me the same thing, which was um, Terminator was doing well, Alien was doing well, and it was like, if you can make this more like Terminator, or you can make it more like Alien, um, you've got a better chance. So um, eventually I sat down and um, took the setting and the characters and dropped a, a killer robot into the storyline and um, massacred them all. Bingo. <laughs> The other world was made more or less by accident about a year ago. But clearly you needed money. Did you guys put up your own money? Did you find money? No, then um, a <coughs> French producer saw the footage that Kareem had shot and saw the main interview which tells the, um, the ghost story, which is sort of the talking head part of the show, and um, said that they would, put up, they would put up the money to bring it up to feature length um, provided we shot the rest of it en français in French so that they could qualify for um, French subsidies. So it became this weird hybrid where it's, um, we, had to, we then had to include a lot of other characters who were French-speaking characters in order to um, qualify for um, the French subsidy, which um, basically topped it off and um, turned it into the strange beast it was. But it, we certainly had no idea that we were, we were actually making the movie or that we would shoot it once we got started. But we then decided to turn it into something which is, um, it's a bit of a found footage movie, but it has the advantage of being true. What advice would you give to somebody trying to get their first movie produced? 
I think the only advice is just to keep going. Don't ever give up, and um, don't you know, just whatever happens. Um, don't don't surrender. Don't back down because um, it's brutally depressing. Um, and can in particular very 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 hard to ever actually get a movie deal at can. I think the main thing is to keep keep showing up. And um, I think if you show up long enough, you eventually become part of the scenery. People have to um, eventually recognize your face and know that you've been around. And um, this may take five years or six years until people start to accept that you actually belong there. But um, just keep showing up, don't give up. Because um, really it's some kind of longevity is, is extremely important. If you stand around long enough, eventually you will become the film industry. Initially, you're a complete outsider, but um, simply by um, sheer durability, um, eventually the odds will come in your favor. And sooner or later, that little fluky moment will um, come about, and it's absolutely impossible to um, to produce that moment to say how, to say how to get it because every single thing that's ever worked for me has been um, for um, the most ridiculous reasons. And I've stayed alive and at liberty. I don't have a nine to five job. I've managed to survive the whole of my life off the back of the film industry. And we're here in Brazil and we're still doing okay. We may not be, have the big house in Bel Air, but at the same time, I'm extremely grateful for the fact that the film industry has always supported me, kept me alive, and has been able to continue to feed my movie habit, to keep watching films, to keep making them. We're still shooting. Um, and well, what more can one ask for?